In the last section, we had a quick discussion around the differences between Ingress Nginx and Kubernetes Ingress. We're now going to continue and start to talk about how this Ingress stuff works behind the scenes to somehow get some amount of traffic into your application. So let's get to it. Now, I wanna first begin by giving you a quick reminder of how we've been doing things throughout this entire course. Throughout the entire course, we've been making config files that contain the desired state of our application. So for example, we've been writing config files that say that we want to be running three pods or three replicas, each of which run the multi-client image. We then feed that into kubectl, and that creates a deployment object. And it's up to that deployment object to look at our current state and then look at our desired state and figure out some migration path or some way to get from the current state to the desired state. And so after the deployment jumps into effect and starts working, it's going to eventually create three new pods, each of which are running the multi-client image. Now, the reason I'm giving you this reminder about how all this stuff works is that this deployment object right here is what we refer to as a type of controller. In Kubernetes, a controller is any type of object that constantly works to make some desired state a reality inside of our cluster. So in the world of ingresses, and as we start to talk about ingress, the exact same strategy right here all applies 100%. You and I are going to write some config file that describes a set of routing rules to take incoming traffic and send it off to the appropriate services inside of our cluster. We're then going to feed that config file into kubectl, and kubectl is going to create something called an ingress controller. So it is a controller. It is something that's going to look at our current state. It's going to look at the desired state and then create some infrastructure that's going to make our desired state a reality. So in the case of our particular ingress controller, which is, as you might guess, using Nginx behind the scenes, when we feed in this config file, the controller is going to create a pod running Nginx that's going to have a very particular set of rules to make sure that traffic comes in and gets sent off to the appropriate different services inside of our cluster. So you can kind of think that this entire setup around ingress looks a little something like this. We have our ingress config over here, which is our config file that describes all the routing rules that we want to have inside of our application. That's going to be fed into kubectl where an ingress controller is going to be constantly working behind the scenes to make sure that all of the routing rules that we define inside the ingress config are actually implemented and met. And so it's going to be up to the ingress controller to create something, something, you know, who knows what it is, but something inside of our cluster that will take the incoming traffic, read some parameters in that traffic, and then send it off to the appropriate service. So the big takeaway right here, the only thing I want you to understand right now is that you and I are going to create something called an ingress config, which is going to be a set of routing rules. We're going to feed it into kubectl, which is going to create this ingress controller. And the ingress controller's job is to look at the ingress config or that set of routing rules and make that a reality. The ingress controller has to create some infrastructure inside of our cluster to make sure that we're actually obeying those routing rules. And so the ingress controller is going to make, again, something that accepts incoming traffic. Okay, so that's the kind of high level description of what's going on here. Now, in the case of the project that we are using, ingress nginx, things are going to work very similar to this, but just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit differently. And so infinitesimally differently, differently that I almost don't even want to tell you that it's working differently, but I am anyways, just so you understand how things are working behind the scenes. So with the very particular project that we are using of Ingress Nginx, the Ingress controller and the thing that actually accepts traffic and routes it off to the appropriate location is actually the same thing. So with the very particular Ingress project that we are using, the Ingress controller and the thing that routes traffic is the same thing. So we can kind of imagine, again, that you and I are going to make a Ingress config or a set of routing rules. We're gonna feed it into kubectl and then the project that we are using Ingress Nginx is going to create a single deployment whose job is to both read in the Ingress config and simultaneously create a pod that meets all of those different routing rules. 
Now, again, this is a very tiny, tiny, tiny distinction, and I only mention this to you because we are going to look at some of the behind the scenes setup of Ingress Nginx inside of our project, and you're going to notice that there are not like the three separate things that I show you right here. In our project, there's only the two separate things as shown in this diagram right here. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a quick pause. We're gonna come back to the next section and there's just a little bit more around some behind the scenes action for this Ingress stuff that I wanna show you before we start going through the setup. So quick break and I'll talk to you in just a minute. 